Hey guys, hope you enjoyed your time off. Hope you enjoyed this week and this weekend. Uh, so it was a special weekend. It was Rosh Hashanah, which is the uh, Feast of Trumpets in Leviticus chapter 23. It's a day where God commanded to blow the trumpet. Every year on this day, God said to blow a trumpet. He didn't give a reason why to blow the trumpet. He just commanded to do it. Um, I think it might have something to do with the uh, rapture or the Lord's return um, in the future. So we'll talk about that in our next class when we start talking about the rapture. So happy Rosh Hashanah. Um, this week, we're going to talk about the messages to the churches found in Revelation chapter 2. What has happened so far, just to uh, bring you back to speed, um, it's sometime around the year 70 to 90 AD, about 40 to 60 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. All the apostles have been killed for their faith uh, by this time, except one, uh, the apostle John, who wrote the book of Revelation. Um, they attempted to kill John. Uh, they attempted to poison him, um, but that failed. Though they forced him to drink a bottle of poison, John could not. John did not die. Uh, so rumors started spreading throughout the churches and throughout the Roman Empire that the Apostle John may be immortal and could not be killed. So it was even enough that the Romans got scared of him. And so they exiled him to the island of Patmos, which was a deserted island off the coast of uh, Turkey. Um, it was while John was on Patmos that he saw a vision of Jesus. And Jesus then, from the vision, began to give John messages for the seven churches that were in Asia Minor, which is uh, modern-day Turkey. And here's the messages he gave. He told John to write a letter, first to the angel of the church in Ephesus, a message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and the one who walks the, among the seven golden lampstands. If you remember from chapter one, when John saw Jesus, he also saw seven lampstands and seven stars. And Jesus held up his right hand and they were, it appeared that the stars were in his hand. Thinking about that since our last class, I was wondering, um, Patmos, if you look at the map, is right around the letter E where it says Greece in the ocean, right there, just west of Turkey and west of Ephesus. I was wondering if when John was on the island, if he was looking towards the shore, looking west, looking towards Turkey, and the seven golden lampstands that he saw were actually in place above the seven churches which are all along the west coast of Turkey, and he could see it off across the Aegean Sea. And maybe on top of each one was a star, which we were told in uh, chapter one that those are angels in charge of each church. And then when Jesus stood on the island or where he saw the vision of Jesus and he put his right hand, the stars seemed to be over Jesus' hand. They were, and they, but they were over the each one of those churches. So, just an interesting thought I thought about, just looking at the geography of things. <coughs> I also thought about what if each congregation today has an angel, a star that is uh, assigned to watch over it. Another cool thought. You're going to see in Revelation that stars are often referred to as angels multiple times throughout Revelations. It also made me think that, you know, what exactly are stars? Are they what? What we're being told, just a big ball of gas out there, or is there more to stars than, than we think? So anyways, cool thoughts in uh, Mr. Rubio's head throughout the past week. But uh, going back to the message that Jesus gave to Ephesus, he said, I know all the things you do. So he knows what we do. I've seen your hard work, your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles but are not. You have discovered their liars and you have patiently suffered for me without quitting. So here we get a little insight into the Lord's heart. Um, he likes when we work hard. He likes when we have patient endurance. Um, he likes when we don't tolerate evil um, or when we examine claims that we hear. And he likes when we patiently suffer for him without quitting. So a little self-reflection there for us, straight from the Lord's heart. 
but I have this complaint against you. So there's things Jesus doesn't like. Um, he said, you don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I'll come and remove your lampstand. Remember, each church has a lampstand. I'll remove the lampstand from its place among the churches, but this is in your favor. You hate the evil deeds of the Nicolaitans, just as I do. So we get a little, ins a little insight into what Jesus does not like. Um, he doesn't like when people don't love him. Who does, right? Um, and when you stop doing the works you did at first, talking about when someone comes to salvation, they're in love with the Lord, they're on fire for him, and eventually it kind of wears off and they stop doing the works they did at first. So again, a little bit more self-reflection for us. Um, so what's the deal with these Nicolaitans? This is going to be the first issue for discussion that we have when we meet on Wednesday. Um, I want you to, you guys to do a little bit of research here. Who were the, these Nicolaitans? And uh, what do you think were their evil deeds in Ephesus that Jesus didn't like? What were they, who were they? What were they doing that you think the Lord didn't like? That way we can kind of learn from their mistakes. So um, get on Google, do a little bit of research before we meet on Wednesday. Who were the Nicolaitans and what did they do? And what you think uh, the Lord didn't like about it. So we'll discuss that on Wednesday. <clears throat> All right. He said, the Lord said, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will give fruit from the tree of life in the paradise of God. So uh, when we get to the class on the places of the dead, one of the places we'll talk about is the place mentioned here, paradise. Um, and the tree of life, which is located in paradise, um, which I think looks kind of like that picture on the right there. So we'll talk about that in a future class when we get to the places of the dead. Um, going on to the church of Smyrna. So to Smyrna, the Lord said this. This is the message from the one who is the first and the last who was dead, but is now alive. I know about your suffering and your poverty. So I guess they were suffering there in uh, Smyrna. He said, but you're rich. I know the blasphemy of those opposing you. They say they're Jews, but they're not because their synagogue belongs to Satan. Don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. The devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. You'll suffer for 10 days, but if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I'll give you the crown of life. All right, so a couple of things we learn about the Lord, the Lord's heart here. Um, he's telling us, don't be afraid when you're about to suffer. Um, and if you remain faithful, even when facing death, he will give us the crown of life. So there's uh, some lessons for us there. Um, as far as the discussion on Wednesday, I want to talk about these uh, 10 days and the church in Smyrna. Um, in your research, just look up the Church of Smyrna, see if there was any kind of significant suffering that happened specifically for 10 days. Um, and I want you to, I want to also discuss with you guys, like, what do you think about these uh, seven churches? We know they existed in the past. Uh, they don't exist now. Um, they're ruins now. Do you think they're going to come back towards the end? Um, already, uh, these ruins are being found in Turkey and congregations are starting to gather around them. Um, so do you think they'll exist again in the future? And could these messages we're reading, could it be for us as well? And so not just the seven churches, but all churches um, that exist even today. So we'll discuss that on Wednesday. We'll make that our second issue for discussion. But do a little bit of research on those 10 days. See if there's something that happened in Smyrna in the past, specifically during that time of 70 to 90 AD. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. Whoever is victorious will not be harmed by the second death. All right, in the places of the dead lesson that we do here in a few weeks, there's a picture of the second death. Uh, we'll talk about that, kind of a scary lake of fire 
where the souls of those who don't believe at, at the end, at the final judgment, are thrown into the lake of fire. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a future class. All right, to Pergamum. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Pergamum. This is the message from the one with the sharp two-edged sword. Remember, John said it looked like he had a two-edged sword coming out of his uh, mouth when he saw uh, Jesus. <coughs> the Lord said to Pergamum, I know you live in the city where Satan has his throne. That's interesting. Yet you've remained loyal to me. You refused to deny me even when Antipas, my faithful witness, was martyred among you there in Satan's city. Okay, so a couple things here that Jesus likes. He likes for us to remain loyal to him and also to refuse to deny him. He doesn't like being denied. Uh, regardless, regardless of the situation you're in, do not deny the Lord. Um, as far as a discussion, you guessed it, Satan's throne in Pergamum. Um, so go ahead and research this as well. Do a Google search on Satan's throne in Pergamum or the seed of Satan in Pergamum. And what I want to discuss Wednesday is, do you guys think Satan literally had a throne there? Like, was Satan, the fallen angel, present in Pergamum in this... Uh, throne that he had there um, this temple he had there or was it metaphorical is satan enthroned somewhere today um, we know he's not everywhere he can only be in one place at one time where is he and where is he ruling from so we'll go ahead and discuss that on wednesday um, but go ahead and google um satan's throne in pergamum or the seat of satan in pergamum you're going to very interesting what you're going to find. Uh, we'll talk about it Wednesday. Okay. But I have a few complaints against you. So a couple things Jesus doesn't like here. He says, you tolerate some among you whose teaching is like that of Balaam, who showed Balak how to trip up the people of Israel. If you guys remember from the Old Testament, um, the book of Numbers, uh, Balaam was a wizard, actually. He was a known wizard that was hired by a king named Balak to cast a spell and curse the people of Israel. Um, Balaam, however, had the ability to communicate um, with God and he, he was told or God told him, do not curse those people, Israel. Those are my people. And so mighty wizard Balaam would not dare uh, go against God. He was scared. So he would not curse the people of Israel, no matter how many times Balak asked him. Um, however, he eventually convinced Balak a way of tripping up the people of Israel by having girls and women go into their camp and causing the, the boys and the men of Israel to uh, um, disobey God by mixing with uh with another people group outside of Israel. So that whole story is in the book of Numbers um, in the Old Testament. Awesome, awesome, interesting story. There's even a time where uh, Balaam's donkey starts to talk because God opens his uh, voice so that the donkey himself can give Balaam a message from God saying, stop. So Highly recommend you guys find that in the book of Numbers. It's a pretty cool story. It's about, I don't know, four or five chapters long in there, somewhere in the middle of it. Um, anyway, so yeah, what Balaam taught them uh, was to sin by eating food offered to idols and commit sexual sin, as I, uh, as I mentioned. In a similar way, you have some Nicolaitans among you who follow the same teaching. So there's a little bit of an answer to your Nicolaitans research some of the things they were doing. Um, Jesus tells this church, repent of your sin or I will come to you suddenly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. All right, so things Jesus does not like. Um, he doesn't like when anybody trips up the people of Israel. You guys got to remember, Israel is God's people. He loves them. They are the chosen ones. And as Christians, we should never, ever talk bad about Israel, 
talk bad about Jews, trip them up. Um, we have been grafted into God's kingdom, which Israel was already a part of. So as Christians, we are we have been joined to Israel in God's kingdom. So don't ever talk bad about Israel. God doesn't like that. Jesus doesn't like that. Um, he also doesn't like what, ever eating any food offered to idols. So if you are ever in any kind of weird situation where food is being offered to as a sacrifice to something or someone other than God, do not eat it as a Christian. And of course, do not commit any sexual sin. Um, God wants all that reserved uh, between husband and wife in marriage. So things Jesus doesn't like. Another look into his heart. All right, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. Everyone who is victorious, I will give some of the manna. That's a uh, food that God provided for them in number for Israel in the book of Numbers. Um, the dew would dry out in the morning and it would turn into bread for them every single day except on the Sabbath. So on Friday, they'd get a double portion so that on the Sabbath, they didn't have to go out and make bread. It was all made for them and they could rest all in the book of Numbers. I think you guys need to read the book of Numbers. Um, yeah, so the manna is food that came from heaven. There's a picture of heaven on um, where we'll talk about that uh, in that Places of the Dead class coming up. Um, he then said, I'll give to each one a white stone, and on the stone will be a grave, a new name that no one understands except the one who received it. So that's interesting. We get up there, we're going to get a white stone with a, I guess, a heavenly name. I don't know. Sounds cool. We'll see when we get there. Okay, and the, the last church message that we're going to talk about uh, this week is the letter to Thyatira also located there in uh, Asia Minor. Um, the Lord said, this is the message from the Son of God, whose eyes are like flames of fire and feet are like polished bronze. Gives you kind of a picture of what Jesus looks like in heaven. Um, there on the left, powerful and mighty. That's our king. That's our reigning king there, guys. Um, our king said to this church, I know all the things you do. Again, Jesus knows everything we do every single day. So keep that in mind. He said, I've seen your love, your faith, your service, and your patient endurance, and I can see your constant improvement in all these things. So things Jesus likes, he likes us to love, to have faith. He likes us to serve, to serve others, right? To have a service. And again, patient endurance. He keeps mentioning that patient endurance, which will be key in the future, as you'll see when we start getting into the seals. But I have this complaint against you. You are permitting that woman, that Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet, to lead my servants astray. Okay, um, there might be a woman, there might have been a woman named Jezebel in this church. Um, it also reminds me of a story in uh, Kings and Chronicles about Jezebel, which was the wife of a king who was evil and a worshiper of Baal. Um, you can read about that again in the Old Testament. Um, so it might have two meanings. It might refer to the Jezebel in the past, or maybe there is a Jezebel that was there, President Thy Thyatira, calling herself a prophet. Um, both were doing the same thing. They were leading servants astray, and they were false prophets. The Jezebel in the Old Testament was a prophet of Baal, which is a uh, which is a demon that we'll, maybe we'll talk about Baal at another time, because um, I think there is some part in in the future, in the end times, that will refer to Baal. But the point for for this week is what they were teaching. Um, they were teaching sexual sin again and food offered to idols. So you could kind of see the pattern here of what Jesus doesn't like and what the demonic world, I would say, kind of wants to in order to trip us up, sexual sin and food offered to idols. 
Um, Jesus gives time to repent. He said, I gave her time to repent, but she does not want to turn away from her immorality. Um, so for us, consider, again, what Jesus doesn't like. He doesn't like for us to lead anybody astray. Don't lead anybody away from Jesus. Don't lead anybody away from God. Again, don't commit sexual sin. It's mentioned again, so it's a very serious thing. And don't eat food offered to idols. Um, if you go into the book of Acts, when the church was first being made, um, there was a letter from the apostles sent to the new Gentile believers. Gentiles are everybody that is not Israel. So everybody that's not Jew in the world, everybody that's not a descendant of Israel in the world is a Gentile. We are Gentiles. Um, so when the gospel came out to the Gentiles and Gentiles, some Gentiles became Christians, the apostles sent a letter to the Christians on how to act as a Christian. And they mentioned these two things. Do not commit sexual immorality and do not eat food offered to idols. So can't stress it enough. These are two things that as Christians you do not want to partake in. Um, if you do, Jesus gives you time to repent. So make sure that you do. Um, but don't continue in it without repenting. Therefore, I'll throw her on a bed of suffering. And those who commit adultery with her will suffer greatly unless they repent and turn away from her evil deeds. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am the one who searches out the thoughts and intentions of every person. And I will give to each of you whatever you deserve. Kind of a little scary passage there. Um, yes, Jesus is loving. Yes, Jesus was our savior. Jesus is also king. Jesus is also judge. He's also God. Um, so you got to remember and you got to respect him um, as God as well. There's a, a scripture in the book of Hebrews that said every knee will come before. Everybody will come before Jesus. Um, every knee will bow and everybody will come before his judgment seat. So keep that in mind. And that's not just non-believers, believers as well you still come before the throne. And we'll talk about that when we uh, when we get into the class on uh, death and the initial judgment coming up here in a few weeks. Okay, wrapping it up. I also have a message for the rest of you in Thyatira who have not followed this false teaching. I'll ask nothing more of you except that you hold tightly to what you have until I come. To all who are victorious, who obey me to the very end, to them I will give authority over all the nations. They will rule the nations with an iron rod and smash them like clay pots. They will have the same authority I received from my father, and I will also give them the morning star. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Okay, um, you guys are going to have an essay due here in two or three weeks i think it's the first october 4th is uh you're gonna have to check on i grade i think i put it for october 4th the prompt of the essay is this what do you think the spirit is saying to the churches today to us okay um so you can start kind of as we go through revelation two and three start thinking about kind of what you're gonna write down i'm excited to read what you guys write down um Think of it as kind of a, a letter to the Lord himself on what do you think the Holy Spirit is saying to us? What do you, what should we take from Revelation seriously here and apply it to how we're living today in our churches or in our personal lives? So you can start working on that now. Again, October 4th is the date um, that that essay will be due. Okay, um, that is... The lecture for lesson two the message to the seven churches part one um, we will discuss this on wednesday the 20th um, before that go ahead and research those things on the nicolaitans the uh satan seed in pergamum um, the suffering for 10 days that happened in smyrna you know it's to start researching that stuff and come on the 20th ready to discuss 
Look forward to seeing you guys and talking with you guys. See you then. God bless.